Hello, and um, welcome to another video on sustainability consulting with Jack. Today is the final video in a five-part series on carbon emissions calculations. And today, we're looking at the moment of magic, how to turn your carefully structured and collated activity data into carbon emissions. For this video, we're going to look at emissions calculations that don't require estimations. And I'm going to create another video exclusively on calculations where estimations are involved. Firstly, let's deal with the simplest and most accurate type of calculation, those without estimations. To kick things off, we'll look at scope one and two data for 2023 emissions occurring in the UK. In this case, a company is reporting their petrol and natural gas emissions under scope one and their electricity emissions under scope two. Firstly, we need to find the correct emissions factor for those emissions and the activity data we collected. So open and download the UK's Greenhouse Gas Emissions Conversion Factors 2023, the full set, because we're advanced users. Navigate to the Fuels tab first to complete the calculation for petrol and natural gas. You'll be presented with a table that has different fuel types in rows and with different units in the columns. Find the emissions factor that matches your data. For example, the petrol we've consumed is from typical UK forecourts and therefore is classified as petrol, average biofuel blend and we've collected the data in litres. And for this calculation, we want to calculate our overall carbon emissions in kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents, or CO2e, which is a way of representing the global warming potential of all greenhouse gases in relation to carbon dioxide. So for this first calculation, we take the emissions factor in cell D96, which is 2.10 to two decimal places, and ensure you're using all the decimals listed to improve accuracy. Then take your activity data and apply this emissions factor, which should look something like this. During 2023, I consumed 150 litres of petrol, and to calculate the carbon emissions related to this activity, I multiplied this value by 2.10, giving us 315 kilograms CO2e. If I then wanted to present this data in tonnes of carbon, I need to make sure I divide this figure by 1,000. Following the same process, how about you try to calculate carbon emissions for 2,750 kilowatt hours of natural gas? Unless specified, most natural gas sources are not considered 100% mineral blend. What answer do you get? In this case, we've used the kilowatt hours gross calorific value emissions factor. Why was that? I'll leave it up to you to find out. The answers are hidden somewhere in the instructions. Next, we'll take a quick look at the company's electricity emissions under scope two. In this case, we need to consider something called dual scope reporting, a process by which you report both the location-based emissions for your electricity and the market-based emissions. Location-based emissions means that the emissions are calculated based on your location, whilst market-based emissions are based upon the tariff you procure. This means you get to clearly report the benefit of the green tariff I know you've meticulously selected. For location-based emissions, the process is the same as before. For market-based emissions, you take the same calculation steps, but you use the emissions factor provided by your energy supplier. Once you've applied this methodology for all of your activity data and their respective scopes, you should be able to create your first ever carbon footprint table or pie chart, and it might look something like this. That's all we have time for today, but hopefully you're now in a strong position to create your first ever carbon footprint. Later down the line, we'll create more advanced videos on calculating carbon emissions. But for now, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and like and subscribe for more content on sustainability consulting. Thank you.